Howdy ho, Nick. And let's see who we've got here. Diane and Kimmy, it looks like, are joining us. Let's see, Nick is muted. Let me unmute Nick. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. We've got a few viewers here with us. Hey guys, we're just a few minutes early and um, we're not streaming into Facebook yet, which we're gonna do. So, you know, we see we've got three people here and then uh, let me get us set up on Facebook in a minute. Nick, do you need anything before I put us live on Facebook? You I need to need an air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have mine on in this room. You know what? I'm going to do real fast. Actually, don't I have it right here? I was going to pull up my um, astrology notes, the notes that you sent me to make sure that we're talking about those things, all the things. Um, all of them. All of the things, all of the things, but looks good. I've got those. All right, let me get us on the book of face here. Let me see. We want to go live on Facebook. Oh, Sam had to leave because of a tornado warning. Man, that's scary. We never get those here. We had one recently and we were all like, is this real? What do we do? Nobody knew what to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm glad you're okay. But yeah, the replay did get emailed out. It was emailed out in today's email. So if you don't see it in your inbox, check your spam folder. Um, but uh, it should be, it should be there in your email. Um, but you could search the Sisters Enchanted. Uh, the other thing, yeah, you should just be able to search the Sisters Enchanted. And it should talk. Okay, let me get us on, on Facebook. What do you to do? Nick, I'm starving over here. I am as well. We're going to probably go to the diner after this. So we might grab a quick pizza since we're flying out tomorrow. Where are we going? Jeez. Okay, we are going... You might have to turn your air conditioner off, Nick. Uh, Which I know it's gonna be really rough. But it's Well it's it's just a fan. Oh. Or like put it on low maybe. Is it the same one as yesterday? Because we didn't hear it yesterday. Yeah, I know. It's incredible. But today it's like very loud. Maybe just move the position or something. Oh wait a minute. You know what it might be? It might be the computer. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Or PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going live on Facebook. All right, I think we are, I think we're good. Let me see here. Got to refresh it. So hello if anybody's watching on Facebook. Um, let me see. Did I mess it up like I messed it up yesterday and I didn't hit the live button? Pretty sure I did hit it though. I just saw That's that. weird. So. What, Nick? I'm trying to pull it up myself. I just saw that it was up there, but... Yesterday, I did the wrong thing or something, and it didn't. Oh, no, there it is. We're on. Hi, Amanda and Trina. Okay, so let me put my phone up here so I can read comments. And Elizabeth and Rebecca. So hello, everybody. Welcome to day two of our sun, moon, and rising class here with the Sisters Enchanted. I'm Sarah, uh, one of the founders of the Sisters Enchanted, where it's our mission to make magic mainstream and create community so that enchanted sisters all over the world can come together and create some magical lives. Um, and so we're here for day two, like I said, of our sun, moon, rising class. Yesterday was day one. If you're watching this on Zoom and you're not in our Facebook group, we did email out the replay for yesterday in the email. And if you're in our Facebook group, the replay of yesterday is tagged in the announcements section and was also emailed out. So you can watch it both ways. Uh, it is also, I think it's public on our YouTube. That's where I have it for the replay. So you can head over there, search the Sisters Enchanted and find it. And remember, if you're in the Facebook group too, to participate in the threads up in the announcements section. Also, there's some prompting, excuse me, 
questions and things for you going on there. Thanks, Adelina. It's just the, the lighting. That's what it is. I have this fancy little light. You want to see it? I'll show you. Not moon related. Um, it's very bright. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and it uh <laughs> and it's like a magical I look like I've slept for a month late. That's what they should call it. Um and now I can't that see and it. your fabulous makeup makeup. Yeah, and I bought makeup. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> I purchased the makeup. <laughs> Hi, Brandy. I saw your post in the business class. I'll answer it. But you would be fine to do the thing that you asked to do. Um, so, yeah, there's Zoom, too. Uh, Andrea is listening while I drink a tropical bay breeze and walk over from the grocery store. Amazing. Hi from Australia. Hi, Nadia. Uh, okay, so what time is it? Is it? It's 5.02. Um, before we get started, Nick, I have a random question for you. It's not a question. I'm putting you on the spot. Are you ready? Okay. Tell us one really fascinating thing about you, since people don't know you so well. About me? I could think of a lot. Like, your upbringing with, like, traveling around was pretty fascinating. And um, you're, and you also, you make cool stuff. So I, I like to draw. I like to play music. I like long walks on the beach. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I was brought up by, uh, like Sarah said, I was brought up um, in a household of hippies. So I was always traveling around to different music festivals when I was younger. I was exposed to all of this stuff from, from the get-go. So, um, you know, I kind of blocked it out when I was younger. But <laughs> <laughs> more of it nowadays uh, yeah know. nick grew up his parents uh do music festival like they travel around bending to music festivals and so nick grew up traveling the country um at music festivals which i think is super fascinating like you said as a kid maybe it wasn't so fascinating but as an adult i think that is like a pretty cool story to tell <laughs> like i grew up traveling the world with my my music festival seeking parents <laughs> it's more fascinating than anything I have to share that's for sure I don't know about that <laughs> <laughs> all right so yesterday we talked about sun signs um and Nick explained that it's really the outward expression of um of your ego and all that good stuff uh so so Nick moon signs you want to dive in, start sure. talking about what's, what the heck? Well, somebody already asked in the group, how do you find your moon sign? So we did talk about this yesterday. Like you can just search a free birth chart and it shall tell you um, <laughs> the best way to do that. Uh, but yeah, Nick, tell us about, about moon signs. So the sun, so we talked yesterday about the sun sign being your outward creative expression and how you kind of change the world so that you can be the person that you want to be, right? And be, be yourself. And, and uh, the moon sign is really kind of the reaction of what happens when the sun sign isn't allowed that freedom and isn't allowed that space. And it creates a kind of emotional reaction in you. That's why it's represented of your feelings and your emotions. Um, yeah. So it, <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So your moon is more, it's inward, right? Right. More it's, it's a subconscious reaction. So when, when say, for instance, when an Aries isn't given the amount of space that it needs for its own independence and creative independence, uh, it, it'll feel insecure because it's not able to be and express itself the way it needs to be. So whatever sign your moon is in will show how you react uh, to that, like what, what ways you react uh, to that. So like a, a moon in Aries would be like somebody that reacts very kind of instantly and defensively and, and needs to kind of uh, get instant kind of uh, defense mechanism. Gotcha. Um, so, so what is, what do you, would you say? So our sun is representative of us because it's what we're creating in our physical world around us. So it's like really what we're bringing into being. Um, but about our subconscious selves, why is it so important to know what your moon sign is and to work with that and not just know like, oh, I'm a Sagittarius sun sign. Like I'm an Aquarius moon. So why would it be important to me to know that I'm an Aquarius moon? Right. Well, it's important to know kind of how your 
the, the reactions are like what you said, they're subconscious. So you don't necessarily know that or notice that you're doing them, right? But everyone else is noticing that you're doing them. So it's kind of uh, about self-awareness, really, and being self-aware of, of your own emotional reactions, you know? And then also to go along with that, the moon is also about how you nurture that, right? So how you nurture the ego into being more secure. So for instance, a, a moon in Aries, well, if it's, if, it's, uh, if it gains independence, if the moon reacts in a defensive way and it can gain independence, the sun will feel more secure in itself. Yeah. So how do moon signs work? So when the moon is, like we say, it's, uh, you know, so you're a Sagittarius, you're Gemini, you're Cancer, whatever, and you're like, oh, hey, it's my season. Um, how does that work for a moon sign? Is it the same thing? Yeah, it's the same exact thing. So whatever sign that your moon lands in, yeah, that's how, you know, that's your, your, the style of, of uh, you know, reactions and the style of nurturing that you need. And it's also the style of nurturing that you give, right? Because the way that you feel uh, makes you secure, you try to nurture other people in that way as well. <laughs> Kaylee's saying that she's having a baby any day now and can't wait to see if she's a Gemini or a Cancer. <laughs> Those are different signs. Kayla, my daughter is a Cancer. And let me tell you, I, <laughs> if she's, if your kid's a cancer and it's anything like mine, I hear you, I see you, and you're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> Gemini moon, Jacob needs to know, like, he needs to talk out all of his feelings and, like, what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So what is this, um, so somebody posted about this too, the connection between the moon and your mother. So the moon is like what I said, it's, it's the nurturer. So where you get your nurturing from um, is kind of the, the style of nurturing that you, you need, right? So your mom was the original nurturer for you. She's the, or, you know, for most people, it could actually be anybody. It could be your dad, it could be your mom, it could be your aunt, it could be anyone that gave you that nurturing when you were younger. Um, but that's why it's the sign, that's why, you know, that it's the sign of the mother. It's the planet of the mother because it, it shows your nurturing style and your emotional reaction style and what you need to nurture those emotional reactions. So is it, is it, is it helpful to look at our moon sign and look at how we were nurtured and see like if there's something, like would it be safe to say that if you're, so, so I'm an Aquarius moon, right? Mm -hmm. So what does that say about me that I'm an Aquarius moon? Uh, you need kind of um, a bit of independence and uh, a little bit of coldness <laughs> uh, from, from the people around you uh, to kind of feel secure in, in the way that, you know, it, it's got to be, a, you can't be the only one giving in to the, in, into the, the nurturing of what's, ha of what's happening. You know yeah, I mean? and so I can look at that in terms of like my, how I was nurtured growing up and I can like is it safe to say that I can reflect on that and see if like maybe I'm taking too much coldness from my nurturing or like I need to learn yeah. to be less cold in my nurturing that's definitely one of the you know all of these things are lessons that we learn in life um and that's definitely one of those things that that you would you would have to to learn I mean for for you for being an Aquarius moon it's gonna feel good for you to kind of have a, a group effort but when you don't get that group effort, it's going to turn into more cold aloofness, you know, not, yeah. not, you know, not wanting to be weighed down by, by everyone else. Yeah. So Kimberly's asking, I think about your rising signs. So we're going to talk about rising signs on Thursday. Um, and Jennifer Jo spent a lot of time at Ashley Live last night picking different hour and minute combos based on what her mother could remember. Finally found a time that feels logical based on the signs that brought up. And that's what she's going to roll with because I'm a pretty self-aware person. I like that. Um, let's see here. So Casey, the Cancer Moon and Cancer North Node. Well, we're not going to get too much into that because then everybody's going to start asking about uh, their individual things. But let's go. Let's roll through. Do you want to roll through the signs, Nick, and talk about them? You mean just a little bit about what each one kind of needs? Yeah. So yesterday we talked about with the sun. It's like I am statements. You know, right. these, like the I sort of statement. So, what's the moon look like for us? The moon is the moon is uh, how you need to nurture yourself in the moment. So, I nurture in a certain way, and by doing that, uh, or I I also react in a certain way. So, like for instance, the moon in Aries, I react uh, kind of instantly and in, uh, towards independence, 
and it's seeking to gain that independence. So that's how it nurtures it as well. So your reactions, emotional reactions are really just a, it's just seeking that nurturing um, that you need. So, so for instance, for Taurus, the emotional reaction is to be grounded and a little bit stubborn, but also, you know, it's, it's very, uh, it's, it wants to, to attract. So it wants to be attractive, right? Um, that's why it wants to be grounded. It wants to, to attract things to it. It doesn't want to have to go out and, and seek it, seek other things. So, uh, they, the, a Taurus moon would be more or less, you know, attracting beauty to mm -hmm. it you know, attracting financial stability and attracting uh, material things because it's an earth sign. Yeah. Um, and then the moon in Gemini, it's going to react with talking, talk, 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 like I said about Jacob. Um, it's going to constantly need to be uh, talking to feel emotionally secure because that's how it uh, finds emotional stability. You know, that's what it's seeking. It's seeking emotional stability, uh, the moon. And then with uh, moon in Cancer, you see... Um, they nurture by comforting others because when they comfort others, other people's emotions aren't going to affect their own because they have so much emotion in them already, you know? So their reaction is to nurture somebody else so that it gives them a sense of emotional stability. Um, a Leo, a Leo moon is going to nurture with, uh, it's going to react by kind of saying, you need to just do this because you need to just, <laughs> be and just be expressing yourself. And, uh, and, and then that's, that's kind of the way that it finds its emotional stability is to be free and to be expressing itself, right? So the way that it tries to get other people, the way it nurtures is to get other people to be themselves so that it can be itself, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so when, then with the moon in Virgo, you see somebody that needs to kind of have, uh, it needs to kind of be perfecting everything around it um, so that it it can feel perfect itself because it's it's about Virgo is all about doing things uh, the right way, always doing things the same way. You know, uh, service, uh, analytical, intellectual kind of. Uh, yeah, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> the Virgo moon is, is is a little bit tougher to talk about because it's a very hard placement for the moon to be in. You know, the moon is a water is a water planet, and Virgo is uh, it's the middle of the the Earth signs. So it, oh, uh, we'll talk about that after you finish, you roll through these signs and then we'll, we'll come back as to like, because like when the moon's in cancer, what that means and all this good stuff. Right. Um, so then with the moon in Libra, Libra is all, is the, uh, it's the scale. So Libra wants to balance. So when it reacts, it reacts in either a very aggressive way or a very domineer, domineered way, right? So if, if somebody is coming at you aggressively, a Libra moon's going to stop and say, nope, <laughs> back up, this is the way it needs to be to kind of create that balance for both people. Um, with the, in Scorpio, you see a constant need for transformation. So um, Scorpio moons aren't necessarily, they don't act in a manipulative way, but it, it's, it's to kind of try to bring pe two people closer together. So they're, they're more apt to like uh, give people presents or, or something like that to kind of make them feel like, oh, there's more of a connection there. Um, and it's, it's always in seeking transformation for of themselves and of the other person. Um, and then with it in Sagittarius, you see people that need uh, to kind of, they're very boisterous because they want to nurture with uh, uh, big grand, grandiose uh, environments. They want to, they want people to, they want themselves to be able to be free and to expand and to to learn great ideas and philosophies uh but and that's also how they nurture as well you know they 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 try to get people to do that uh they they try to get people to have fun with them you know mm -hmm. be boisterous and your mom is actually a uh sagittarius, sagittarius moon yeah. so my mom is a sagittarius yeah. sun and a sagittarius moon and which, a sagittarius rising which makes if so much my mom is like you guys being her daughter is one of these things growing up we were just like oh my god give me any other mom give me any other mom but as an adult I'm like my mom is a lot of she's a lot of passion in a person yeah. and that passion presents in every way possible <laughs> 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 every way possible <laughs>
Um, so then with the moon in Capricorn, you see, you know, Capricorn is all about achieving. So um, that's how they nurture themselves, but that's also how they nurture other people by giving, by needing space and giving other people space so that they can uh, seek their own achievement. Um, Anna's a Capricorn moon. <laughs> <laughs> um, we talked a little bit about the moon in Aquarius, how they need to kind of have a group effort um, so that they're not always feeling like they're the ones kind of nurturing and they're the ones that are always kind of needing to be the one to nurture other people. Um, which is super interesting because you know Kevin, my husband, and I, we're both fire. He's an Aries, I'm a Sagittarius sun, and we're both Aquarius moons. And uh, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that about Kevin. No, yeah, true story. We're both Aquarius moons. And so it's really interesting to see how things play out in our house. All this fire mm -hmm. on the ego. And Just then, need a little group effort, guys. Come I on. Know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go team. <laughs> Continue on. And then we're going to talk about the moon and where it feels at home and all that good stuff. And then the last one is a Pisces moon. And, and Pisces moon is a very hard place moon as well. I mean, it creates a great uh, dreaminess and uh, sympathetic person. But um, Pisces has no boundaries, right? So a Pisces moon has no boundaries for other people's emotions. They're always taking on other people's emotions. Um, so in that way, they kind of end up shrinking back into themselves and um trying not to have other people kind of affect them um steve's actually the the tech elf of pisces moon yeah our tech guy dobby the tech elf um yeah so some of the questions that have rolled in and i think i could i could answer them pretty quick uh so one of the questions was is it common to have your sun and your moon in the same thing and i don't i don't think it's like any more common or not I, we've had a couple people in the group write that they're all three like my mom is um or like the same sun and moon so i think you know it's it's a it's not supposed to be or not not supposed to be that way it's just hey mug buddies you're rocking the sisters enchanted mug over there i see um <laughs> i walked into your house yesterday and i was like why do you have my mug and then i was like oh yeah because you have the same mug but for a second i was like could you take that um anyway so yeah so it's like it's it's normal to have for your planets to like you have your sun your moon in the same sign or something uh, so it happens and it doesn't happen i think probably all in the same way uh so no nick did all the signs he did gemini and and virgo but they're in the printable too in your email so the things that he said are also in the printable for you um, and then somebody was asking about how to find your moon sign you just search for a free birth chart a free birth chart online there's all different websites put in your information and then it'll tell you where your moon is in your chart um let's see here let me see some other questions that came through real quick um so, were you gonna say something nick yeah well i was just gonna touch which we'll probably touch upon it more on friday too but you know the the sun is where the sun and the moon are both representative of your parents right because they're the most influential aspects of you um, and the sun is more representative of the, of the parent that was more of a greater influence for your creativity. And the moon is more of the parent that was more of a nurturer for you. Um, so the relationship between the sun and the moon is also a relationship between those two people in your life. Mm, yeah. So they're right on top of each other. They might have had a great, you know, where they worked well together. Yeah, so here's some questions for us to keep in mind as we go forward. So Kaylee's asking about moon signs and our partners in signs of us and our partners influence of our relationship so what's really interesting uh, and nick can talk about how complex it is to look at relationship readings in charts so he'll talk about that in one second but let me just answer one other question and then nick maybe you can go there so norma's saying asking our pisces moons empaths so that's what's really interesting uh norma is uh so there's to my knowledge so nick's our astrologer but i'm our like you know witchy spiritual person here your i'm your magical cruise director so yeah, <laughs> grab a life vest um i would say that um <laughs> i would say that there's not a particular thing that makes you more prone to being an empath and the reason for that is because in your chart you are you have all these different placements happening and you're born into this lifetime to experience something and to grow in some way so all of these different pieces together are going to 
uh, um, a, that it's all something to work with as to whether you open yourself up to receiving. When you look at an empath, you're, you're open to feeling all these energies and emotions of people around you. And so you can handle that in a couple of different ways. We have people that, you know, you can either really um, embrace that and learn how to work with it and, 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 and handle those emotions. We have some people that it's just like you shut them out and you're like, that's too much. I am going to shut down. We have some people that drives them to anxiety and depression. So this people that experience these emotions and are ultra sensitive to the world around them, like an empath is, it presents in us in a whole bunch of different ways. And so I think that we can't look at someone's chart and say, oh, you're this, so you're an empath. But more you could look at your chart and be like, oh, this explains a lot to me in terms of why I maybe shut down on those things and why I don't accept them or why I'm really good at accepting them and why I'm really good at managing them. So that would be um, my answer for that. And then let me see. That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. So here's some of the questions that are coming through, Nick. So, and you probably see them too, but there's the one about, we can talk about how complicated it is to um, look at relationships and birth charts. I mean, it's, it's doable. Like people do it yeah, all the time. But, but, you know, there, there's, there's, there's more to than uh, just, than just your moon and your emotional needs uh, in a relationship. There's, there's uh, the way that you attract people, what you're attracted to, what you desire in life. There's, there's just the seventh house, for instance, is, is about the relationships, the physical manifestation of the relationships in your life. Um, and then there's also the partner, the partner's chart too, and how that lines up onto your chart and, and the, the quality of compatibility between the two of you um, and the direction of your life. Yeah. So, yeah, so there's a lot happening there. So Nick gave me this um, really cool kind of uh, visual a while back. So we hear all these things, and I, I was talking about this to somebody else recently, and I think Anna and I were talking about it in the Common Myths um, live we did last week. So we'll hear all this stuff, and we'll be like, oh, the moon's in such and such, or the sun is here. This is going to make you have this happen, or you're going to feel this way. And while that's like a, a broad generalization, there's a lot more that goes into it. And so what you really, when you're like, okay, so the moon is in... Scorpio or something, you know, and you're like, oh, you hear all these things online. The moon's in Scorpio and this is what it's going to do for me. Really to know what it's going to do for you is you've got to look at your birth chart. So you have your birth chart, which is all your stuff on it, right? And then you pull the transit chart that shows where everything is today. And really you need to look at those two things together and see where what is happening today is in accordance to what was happening when you were born. And that's how you're able to tell. And it's like that, I think with like relationship reading. So you have your chart your partner's chart, plus what's happening in the sky right now. So it's like this giant puzzle that's happening because we're all impacted individually every day by what's happening around us. Um, and, and yeah, so when we, like even one step further, we've got to look at that piece of the puzzle, right, Nick? Right, absolutely. There's, you know, there's learning the language and then there's learning how to, to synthesize all the pieces of it all together. And then there's learning mm -hmm. how to synthesize multiple people together. Yeah, which is all just like so much stuff. So Pamela's asking if the nurturer was all the same person. So basically like you're, so I would say in my life, um, my mom was a single mom. So she'd be like my son and my, my moon person, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, you know, for instance, for Anna, uh, her moon ends up in her third house. So um, when when her, her mom when your mom couldn't necessarily uh take care of her um the third house is all about you know siblings so you were more of a nurturer for her than and it, at times than than your mom was but you know that that's also because your mom was busy doing things that she needed to do to for the house to keep it going <laughs> is that how we're gonna phrase that <laughs> Is it just like that? <laughs> no, but all that Sagittarius passion and my mom doing something or other. But no, my mom, was, I love my mom. Um, but yes, I definitely no, stepped no. up as her nurturer a lot. So um, we have the question here that birth charts ask for gender. So is that a factor? I feel like some of the software probably also just uh, like populates their data that, you know, like. Um, That's what I was going to say. And also like if you're looking at, for instance, astro.com, they do personalized uh, daily kind of uh, insights for you. Um, so that, that, and it's also that, that, that's where that would kind of influence that differently. 
Yeah. Um, so we have a question about a moon in a 12th house. So Nick's not going to run through all of the houses right now, but do you want to give just like, like your 12th house is like your hidden space for sure. So um, to me, that's like extra, extra subconscious <laughs> to me. I mean, I'm no astrologer. <laughs> but I would be like, that's a lot of subconscious. Um, but do you just want to say what houses are, Nick? Like what is a house without explaining so, all of them? Yeah, the first, uh, what is a house? The houses are your, the physical manifestation of, of what's happening around you. Um, and each different house represents a different part of that. So the lower half of the chart is more about uh, your own things that are happening to you um, in, the, in the physical world. And the upper half of the chart is more about other people and how those are influenced by that. Mm. Jen's complimenting me on my eyelashes. Thanks, girl. I bought some grown-up mascara. <laughs> glamorous. Yeah, hashtag glamour. <laughs> um, so Angela says, I hear people say you're supposed to work on stuff in your houses. How do you know? what you are supposed to work on. What was that? That you're supposed to work on stuff in your houses. How do you know what you're supposed to work on? Do you want to answer or do you want me to take that one? Uh, stuff in your houses, like uh, as far as like what's on your house cusps or well, she, as far as the planets in your houses. I think she, just people say like you need to work on stuff depending where it is in your, so I think like I'll just, I'll just dive in and start answering and then maybe this might um, get you on the same, like on my, where my, my train is headed. Um, like I said, grab your life vest, people. <laughs> Sarah's in charge. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, uh, so I think that when you look at your astrology chart, your birth chart, people will say that you have this in this place, this and this, or you're like each house is representative of these different things. And there's all like when you want to choose something to work on, I would always say to look at the piece of you that you are seeing is bringing resistance to your life right now. So what about you is causing resistance in your life? Is it your communication style? Is it your ability to work with money? Is it your ability to nurture yourself or be nurtured or practice gratitude? Like what is causing blockages in your life right now? which can be really hard to figure out because we're always going to be like, Oh, nothing. I am amazing. And I'm not causing my own blockages. Everybody else is. So first step is to figure out like, what are you doing in your life to create the situation that you're in? And then you can look at your birth chart and maybe be like, okay, so where do I see in here that there's something going on in this area that I might need to push forward, heal, work through that kind of thing. So, um, so when people say that you need to work on stuff, based on your houses, I would always say, well, what, what in your life today is the thing you need to work on? The birth chart is a roadmap for you, right? Um, I always like to think of it as like you're walking, you, you start in a dark room at the beginning of a dark room at, at the beginning of your life. And you, you, the end of your life is you're reaching the end of that room. And uh, the room is completely dark. You have no idea where you're going, what's going to happen, and you're just walking through it randomly. But with the astrology chart, you can kind of have a little flashlight to see where, what's going on in that room. Uh, and yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see here. So let's see. Is it Arlen is asking about Pluto? Um, so we're not specifically talking about Pluto, but do you have like a five sentence Pluto? Anything? Pluto? Pluto yeah. is about the larger transformations in your lifetime. Yeah, right. <laughs> when, the moon in, when the moon is in your sign, does that just mean your specific characteristics for your moon sign are highlighted more than any time? So if your sun and moon sign are, are the same sign? No, like, like if I'm an Aquarius moon, so when the moon's in Aquarius, does that... Yeah, definitely. It just means that you have the, uh, the, so the, the transiting planets right now, they are, they are affecting everybody the same way, right? So when the, uh, the, the moon, the moon right now is on top of your moon, there is a certain connection to the emotions of everyone else around you. Mm. Um, what's really interesting, we talked, I, I do a moon class too, and we were, um, we, a couple of like lessons uh, or rounds of it ago, we talked about what phase the moon was in when you were born. So like if it was in a first quarter moon or full moon or like a disseminating moon or something. And then if you could, like, if you were, so say you were a disseminating Aquarius moon, if you're like under a disseminating Aquarius moon, we were like, that's extra like special ritual for myself time. Um, so you can really dive into that and like dig deep there. Um, let's see. So Adelina is saying, holy cow, it's a lot of work just to figure out your info and how it affects 
you. Yeah, I think that um, like there is a there is a one there's a site that does it for free where you can get your birth chart and the transit on the same chart. So it'll show you your chart, and then I think it's like either the inner ring is your chart and the outer ring is what's happening in the sky right now. Yeah. Um, and so it's not that because you have it on one piece then, and then you can be like, oh, so my stuff's on top of my stuff, or like this is what's happening for me. Um, so Nick uses uh, Solar Fire software for birth charts. Um, so I'm winning bullets over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I know it's super hot. I'm sorry. Uh, Jennifer Joe is saying, is it normal to feel like you take traits from all signs? Well, yeah, all of the signs are in are in your chart, and all of the houses are kind of. Uh, they, they link to all of the signs as well. You know, the first house is represent, representative or uh, links to the energy of Aries. <clears throat> I know Jacob is killing me back here. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, you have all of the energy of all of the signs. And what's that? Mm -hmm. right, well, we're going to have dinner in a little bit, bud. <laughs> <laughs> He's running around without pants on. <laughs> He's fine. <laughs> At least he's got on underwear. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, finish your thought. Um, so normal uh, to feel traits. Yes, you have all of the energy of all of the signs. Everyone does. Yeah, because they're all like with the houses. That's what people look at the chart and be like, oh my gosh, like eight of my houses are empty or something. And you're like, well, yeah, but they still have the energy there. So Carla's saying, as adults, we can see how our charts have affected us. What do we look at when we're reading a newborn's chart? Can you give us any insight? And the possible adult this child may be. Let me just tell you that when I was having both of my children, Anna and Nick were constantly like, oh my gosh, your kid, you are going to damage this kid. This kid is going to be. Say that? <laughs> yeah. like, what was it that, no, with Adam. Yeah, I can't say you, that. Don't what, say that, Anna. <laughs> one of you was texting me and you were like, um, yeah, Adam's going to feel like he has to protect you. Like he's going to be your protector. And I was like, oh no, I'm going to damage my son because he feels like he has to protect me. So you didn't tell me that. I interpreted it like I was going to damage him. <laughs> I was like, stop telling me about them. Um, um, when you're looking at a, like a newborn and uh, a ch children's charts, you want to look at the inner planets more than you want to look at the outer planets because the cycles that the outer planets represent are going to be a little bit more difficult to tell. And by outer planets, I mean like Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. Those are more uh, kind of generational things that happen. Mm -hmm. um, so when, when you're interpreting, you know, a child's chart, you want to look at definitely the sun, definitely the moon, and how that relationship, uh, it can, it's just going to help your relationship with whoever the son and, you know, whoever the mother and the father are um, to kind of, you know, determine how, you, what you need to work on and, and, and you know, to, to give the child what it needs. Yeah. So Shelly is saying that uh, she's asking about cusps. So Shelly, we, we talked about that a lot yesterday. So it's really, um, if you're on a cusp, like it would make sense for you to feel the next sign energy. If you're like, oh, so I'm really this one, but I feel like if you're a Scorpio Sagittarius, right? Um, like if you're like, oh, but I feel more Sagittarius or something, that, you know, that would make sense. But watch yesterday's. Um, for sure. Yeah, if you a full moon, that's it's a lot of that get get up and go fire energy there under a full moon. Let's see here. Um there if you Google, I forget the site. If you just Google moon phase calendar, Rebecca, you can look up every full moon phase, I think back to like the 40s, I want to say, 50s or 40s. We did it in my moon class a couple times ago. Um, but you can just find it. You put in your date and it'll show up for you. Um Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so Adelina's got her back with that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm partial to Jacob. He's super cute. Um, <laughs> um, Amy, for a birth chart, you just have to Google like um, uh, astro.com or astrolabe.com or astrostyle. Just go to Google and type in free birth chart and you'll find a bunch of options pop up for you. Um, and you just put in your information. Um, so Katrina, short insight on empty houses. So, uh, like that we said, so they might firstly a, a house and I'm answering next questions for him, but a house, I'm starting to select too. this light, this light might have to go. Okay, um, I love it when you answer questions. Cause it's like, she's learned something from me. I know I've learned so much. <laughs> um, to hang around with astrologers long enough and then you're just 
like everybody you look at, you're like, oh, it's, they probably have some weird sign situation happening and that's why they're not happy people. Now, <laughs> so, uh, okay, so your houses, even though they might be, firstly, they might look empty on the birth chart that you look up online. When Nick can pull, using Solar Fire, this, which is an astrology software, it's like 300 bucks. So, I mean, you could buy it yourself. I don't know why you, you would want to spend $300 to just pull your own birth <laughs> chart. And you can like get a reading for a lot less than that. But anyway, um, so when you pull up, when Nick pulls up a chart on Solar Fire or any astrologer does, they can adjust like how much detail is on the chart. So that you can like get down to all of these like minute asteroids and things that are in the sky so chances are you don't you probably don't have an, an empty house like there's probably something there it could be empty but there's likely something small there um, but it, each house is also when you uh, your chart will have the house will fall in a sign and it'll have the energy of that sign associated with that house um, so it's it's not I mean while it's empty it's like you know quote unquote it's air quotes empty Right. Well, all of those, all of these signs and the planets, they kind of work together. Planets rule signs. So for instance, if your third house is empty, but on the cusp of the third house was Aries, um, it's going to be influenced by the Mars energy. So those things are going to be working together. And that's all yeah. about synthesizing the ideas of, of, of what, you know, is in your chart. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I forget for sure. Best way to learn is to teach. Um, uh, uh, what was the question? I was, so Nadia was asking about being born in the day of the week. She was born on Monday associated with the moon. Yeah. So those, the, the associations, uh, the planetary associations of the days of the week, those go way back in time to uh, our early kind of time tracking. And they are each day of the week, the seven days are associated with the planets that we could see. Um, with our naked eye at some point or time, uh, which is why we're, there's many more planets but seven days of the week because they were the seven we could see. Um, and so, yeah, so I don't know. I think if you practice any kind of magical belief system or, you know, any kind of like witchy, magical, spiritual belief system, I think that you could definitely honor yourself in that, you know, extra, extra little boost of moon energy there, sure. Um, so Natalie, how do planets that were retrograde when someone is born affect them? They work just as they would if they were retrograde. So your entire life you are, for instance, Mercury retrograde, your entire life is going to be, uh, your mind, uh, needing to be, uh, perceived in inwards, right? So you're constantly perceiving, you know, trying to re-perceive things. Um, you should make t-shirts. I was like I'm all my Mercury is always retrograde. Next week, next week there's going to be five planets retrograde: Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Ur or uh, yeah, no Neptune, and one more. I forget what the other one is, but uh, imagine you know people born that at that point. Yeah, right. Yeah, so Natalie's saying that she had many planets in retrograde when she was born. Is that considered rare? I would say at this point we have like what seven billion people. Is that how many billion people are on the Earth now? Um, I would say at this point there's probably really not much rare in terms of how your, a birth chart is simply because there's so many people on this earth. Like think about the amount of people that are born every day. Right. Um, so Annalena, I was born on football Sunday. My day was, my dad was present. I'm sure he wanted to watch the game. That's funny. Um, so now he practices witchcraft. Yeah. So for sure. Honor, honor that moonness there. I think, um, I think it was, I think, I don't know, I forget what day we got born. I'll have to look, look at that. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, so Jennifer Joe, what's one of your favorites, even though you didn't know, know your birth size? Awesome. Um, what does moon trine Jupiter mean? So, um, well, I don't know if you want to just talk about what a trine is, Nick. We're trying to just veer away from answering too many because we just, with so many people in the group, before Nick could be here all day, just like giving people specific birth chart details. But do you have like a... a yeah, well, a trying means there. that uh, it creates <laughs> a, a, like a kind of, what is it? I think it's 60 degrees or is it 120? It's, it makes a triangle shape almost. If there were a third planet there, it would be called a grand trine. But um, 
what what is that? It's three hundred and sixty divided by three. Yeah, one hundred and twenty degrees. It, it's, it's two planets, one hundred and twenty degrees. Yeah, it's a triangle is one eighty. Yeah, and so it makes it uh, previous math tutor over here. It, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I tutored all the way up to um, algebra two. Oh wow. Um, but it makes the two planets work okay. really well together. So for instance, Jupiter is all about your perceptions and the way that you're able to understand things. And the moon is all about emotional reactions. So your emotional reactions are going to have a certain strength to your perceptions and understanding. So you have a really good gut instinct of the way that, you know, you perceive things. Yeah. Um, so Yazelle is asking, are there any ways we can honor our moon signs? For sure. So if you Google in this cl class group, um, moon phases, you'll find tons of videos in here from our free moon phases class and also in the announcement section in our pinned posts with the guidelines for the group. There's our link to our enchanted freebies if you're in the Facebook group. I know some of you are watching on Zoom still, um, but uh, we can you can go to our website and you'll find the link for that. Um, and there's a moon phases lesson in there. We talk all about working with moon phases and also like in different ways to work with the moon. So yeah, you can honor, like if you're in an Aquarius moon or if it's an Aquarius, oh, okay, not Aquarius. I'm an Aquarius moon, so I'm using that example. So if I was like, it's an Aquarius new moon for me, like if we were under, so I'm an Aquarius moon and if it was an Aquarius new moon and it was an Aquarius lunar cycle then, then, um, you know, I might want to put some extra intention or extra work into my, into honoring that lunar cycle, because it would be like being like, I'm a Sagittarius sun, this is my Aquarius lunar cycle, right? Um, or something like that. So you can totally do all those fun, um, witchy, magical ritual things. Um, so how does retrograde change the sign? It's all about, you know, re perceiving it differently, you know? perceiving the way that things are happening. When, when Mercury goes retrograde, it's not really moving backwards. It's just your perception of that. So you're, you're having to re-perceive the way that you've been thinking over, over the last however many months. Um, mm -hmm. And so you're, when you're born with a retrograde, you're going to be perceiving things differently in, in that like than most other people would. Yeah, we talk about this with Mercury retrograde. Nick and I, usually when Mercury goes retrograde, we, we have this chat that... Um, when communications we all like blame mercury retrograde for stuff and we're like oh it could mess up your communication but really like what's happening is that's an area that you needed to be exposed to right like like if all of your technology is breaking left and right in mercury retrograde it's because you need to not be like you're missing some communication in your per like in person eyeball to eyeball communication <laughs> the mercury is going to like f up your technology life so that yeah, you pay attention right. <laughs> yeah so like these retrogrades they're they're uncovering something that you need that you're not seeing um, maybe in life if you're born with a retrograde you might be uncovering that for other people too you know mm -hmm. amazing um so nadia seems to feel down when the sun is in your sign and happy when the moon is in your sign yeah it, that could be like maybe your 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 sub your intuition your subconscious something around your nurturing self is really shining then you know could be the case so in the facebook group if you're in the group i put a thread in there for you to talk about your moon sign and then also your sun sign and your moon sign and how those interact together and what what that makes sense for for you after watching these two videos so make sure to share with us in the thread it's in the announcements section um the little like overview of what the different moon signs mean was emailed out if you don't have the email check your spam folder it probably landed there and also if you signed up and you did not confirm your email and you're not getting emails, that would be why. So you wanna search your inbox for an email from us asking you to confirm your subscription um, to get the emails. So that's that's what you would want to check on. Um, so Arlen's asking multiple planets in your 12th house. Uh, so your 12th house is your- Subconscious. Like, your subconscious. It's like the dark corner of your basement, right? Uh, uh, it's it's a place of like it's the original home of Pisces, so there's no boundaries there, so you, you don't really know what uh, notice what's happening, but it's always happening. Yeah, so if you have multiple multiple planets, any I think it would matter like what other planets are happening around it. So I don't know that Nick could just speak to yourself. It's all about kind of how it all plays together. It's not not enough just to say, oh well, you know, it means this if it's in your twelfth house. Yeah. Yep. 
Um, I know I was looking at someone's chart the other day that I know and uh, and there was like her moon and her Lilith were both in Leo and then somebody else had, I forget what, I think her moon was in her, no, what was it? I don't remember. Something was in her 12th house and I was just like, oh goodness, I wish I was a like full-fledged astrologer and can give you guys some information because it was fascinating to me that her Lilith and her moon, they were like right on top of each other and we're both in Leo and I was like, there's got to be something to this. <laughs> <laughs> and I texted Anna and Anna's like, that's a lot of desire. <laughs> like you really want to be desired. <laughs> um, so where you learn about all the different house meetings. Uh, I mean, you could search them online and we do have a class about that kind of thing too. Uh, Samaria so feels like I relate more to my moon sign, rising sign than I do to my sun sign, the older I get. I feel like that would make sense, uh, you know, especially as you like learn to listen to yourself, you know, and your, your subconscious and your intuition and, and all that good stuff. So yeah, I think that would make a lot of sense, especially as women, because we, especially women in this group, because we probably, the women in this group, I know Nick's like, what about me? The women in this group in particular, because a lot of us are practicing things like working with intuition and energy work and all of that good stuff. So we're even more, you know, I think open to hearing our subconscious and recognizing it um, and feeling into it than, you know, the, the average person on the sidewalk. So, uh, so it would make a lot of sense for people in this group, in my opinion, to be like, oh, I really resonate with my moon sign, um, for sure. So, um, and yeah, the, re the location of your birth does definitely impact things. Um, so, yes. Yeah, it should just adjust, I mean. It's the houses, it really shifts around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, triple Virgo, sun, moon, rising. My mom, we talked about that earlier, Angela. She's a triple Sagittarius. Um, so we're going to talk about putting it all together on Friday. So Thursday, tomorrow is your break day. It's your off day. So maybe Nick and I will, maybe we'll, we'll cook up a fun task for you tomorrow and put it uh, in the email tonight. Uh, and, um, and Thursday we're talking rising signs and Friday we're putting it all together. So we're going to talk about that some more for you Friday, Angela. So tune into that for sure. Uh, and yeah, Nick, any last words on moon, moon signs for us? If you guys don't know yours, just Google a free birth chart and, and it'll pop up for you and make sure you participate in the threads in the group. And the replay of this will be emailed out for anybody, you know, who's looking to watch it again, not in the Facebook group or Zoom people. Anything, Nick, last minute? I don't think so. We basically talked about it all. Um, you know, the moon is something that happens on a subconscious level. It, it In a realistic sense, it, it pulls on the biggest, you know, body of water, the ocean um, in, in the world, you know. So it's something that, you know, you don't really notice that's happening until you're paying attention. So <laughs> study it up. <laughs> <laughs> True story. All right, guys. Well, then that is it for us on your moon sign. Like I said, we'll be here 5 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday. I'm hoping not to mess that up. I am visiting family and we'll be in a different time zone, only by an hour. But I'm really hoping I remember and be like, okay, so it's actually this time for me, not that time. Um, <laughs> Nick show his eyelashes. Fair. <laughs> Nick have glorious eyelashes. Sweet eyelashes. <laughs> you have a boy eyelash. Not dollars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know what's happening. Um, so that's it for today. So we'll see you 5 p.m. Thursday. Uh, and then I will shoot the replay of this out tonight for you guys. And we will maybe come up with a little activity for you to do. And yeah, that's it. We'll see you. We'll see you in the group. So I hope you guys have a rest of your day. Go out there, do something to enchant it a little bit. And we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> 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 Save Nick. <laughs>